be reminded that the news headlines are read as published and are not a reflection of ADBN's position on these news stories. However, let's begin a more broad and robust dialogue as directed by these headline stories. We're now joined in our studios by our public affairs analyst, Mr. Olami Lekong Adifolarin. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Now, it's a, it's a morning where there's a lot to talk about and uh, in looking to be objective, uh, let's begin with the very first call. Uh, on the Daily Times this morning, President Bola Metinibgu once again rededicating the need for stronger anti-corruption structures in West Africa to tackle graft. Exactly. Very important. It was just uh, yesterday, me and a few of my friends were looking at the trans-border crimes with the anti-corruption or corruption, particularly money laundering, and it was in financing all border into trans border crime, which we were looking at yesterday. And it was very important that at the ECOWAS level, this has to be strengthened because most of these ECOWAS countries are, are more like looking, a little bit shying away from the, the dangers or the threat of trans border crime, which corruption is one of it. Because if you look at corruption deeply, it's one of those uh, uh, menaces in our society that will be able to penetrate all sectors of the economy and all sectors of life of our society fiber. So ECOWAS members need to look at how they must strengthen the fight against anti corruption and also look critically at transborder crime, which also beneath some of these issues that we are looking at. So the uh, President Tudu is right to call for a more stringent action by ECOWAS members so that they can be able to fight this uh, anti corruption issue head on. But another angle to, to anti corruption is that you know, most West African countries have been paying this service to anti corruption fight because there are more stringent sanctions that need to be meted out. Nobody is talking about how they can put in place sanctions that will ensure that people who are found wanting in terms of corruption are punished dearly. In Nigeria, for instance, we still have this like, uh, like that Jessica attitude towards punishing people who are found wanting to have stolen billions upon billions or trillions of naira. Imagine them taking them to court and they get patry two years, three years, seven years maximum. The one that have gotten the highest of years in terms of imprisonment is seven to eight years. So we need sanction. Every sanction on people found wanting to have committed corruption, financial, particularly financial corruption. Because other corruption is also part of it. But corruption that we most of us talk about is around financial corruption, which is very, very a, you know, a threat to development in Africa. A, there was a report by United Nations Development Agency that talked about that. Because of corruption, a lot of development dividends that have come to African countries, sub-Saharan African countries, have been let go because most of the money meant for development purpose has been stolen and looted one way or the other. So we must fight corruption in Africa, particularly in West Africa. Now, in this fight against corruption, mm. I would recall that uh, last month, the Interpol mm. also published a more robust report exactly. on some of the humongous amounts that are being laundered out of the country. Exactly. And even with uh, this report, the question is on having repatriated some of the funds mm. that were said to have been corruptly looted out of the country. Mm. Most Nigerians say we still have a challenge in tracing how these monies are put into use in bettering our lots. Because most times when this money comes in, the government doesn't give the right information to citizens on how some of this money were expended. I could recall that when the uh, bachelor loot was brought back and some other looted funds were brought back under the Buhari government, a chunk of it was said to have been dedicated to the, the second Niger bridge. A chunk of it was also said to have been dedicated to more road infrastructure across the country. So, but we need more information like that so that people, citizens, can be kept abreast on what is happening in Nigeria. I will say we call what the president talked about misinformation and miseducation of Nigeria because the federal government and state government, local government, they don't inform the citizens on some of the things they are doing. The issue of return looted fund into Nigeria or repackage looted fund back to the Nigerian economy, how has it been? Just last. Uh, two weeks ago, when President Tunubu addressed Nigerians on the issue of uh, protest, he said 50 billion uh, uh, as part of the student loan was collect was was to be given to NEFON, Nigerian Student Loan Agencies, by EFCC. But you know that when you go to social media and begin to check their news, a lot of Nigerians don't even understand what that particular information was all about. So, so a lot of people are now asking: Is EFCC a central bank? Is EFCC now a consortium of Nigerian money? But I, I, I discovered that some of them didn't go through the speech of the president and they didn't know where the money is coming from. That's why they are showing that ignorance on that. But how would the government have gone beyond the president's speech and say, okay, part of the money that we are going to be using as student loan is coming from a recover loot by EFCC. And 50 billion of it will be given to, to the student loan management authority so that they can be able to distribute to students. And the news came out this week that over 
or rather to the 2000 set of student uh, uh, fees were being paid by the agency that was responsible. So we need concrete information so that we can understand where those money have been repackaged or put to in back as part of the development. Program. But when the government keep quiet, it means that the citizen will not know and they will continue to criticize the government on some of the things they are doing, particularly return loot by public officials in the past. So, so you think it's more from a premise of lack of information management definitely it's part of it lack of information management and i mean dedicated aspect of those money which aspect of the development are they putting in those money to like the one for the student loan is very appreciable we, uh, we appreciate the government effort the one that was dedicated to the second niger bridge very good then the other one that was also put into infrastructure very good but what about others particularly properties cars houses that were also collected by yes as part of the cover loot where did they put the, the, the money to? After no, no, they normally sell them. They, they, they sell them out. So where did they put the money to? So we need to be having update information from the EFCC, from Minister of Finance, from all that related agencies that are being given such money to, to do one or two things or the other. So we need to know where the money goes to. So Nigerian can be worried from. So that, that ignorance or that illiteracy they will show in the area of criticizing the government because they didn't get the right information from the government. We can put a limit to that. Now, in putting a limit to this, Nigeria's government, through President Bola Metinibu, has told ECOWAS that $88.6 billion annual illicit financial flow accounts mm. for poor Africa infrastructure. And as such, efforts need to be redoubled in strengthening anti-corruption structures in West Africa to fight graft. Now, in leading into other stories making headlines this morning has been... An invitation as handed out to Comrade Joe Ajero, the NLC president, following allegations of treason and terrorism financing. Now, this was earlier captured on the first newspaper and the day's day newspaper as well. Now, it's off the back of the raid of the Labour House in Abuja as well. Mm -hmm. uh, many talked about it from the angle of somewhat looking to intimidate Labour. Mm -hmm. The police is quite vehement that they mm -hmm. have the evidence to extend an invitation to Comrade Ajero and invite him in for questioning. But where do you stand in all I, I think it's, it's important we we'll have to understand some of the intrigues around this particular issue. Although many people are reason, are putting the reason behind maybe maybe Ajero as a Labour Party, as a Labour, NLC leader, as well as a member of Labour Party, as well as trying to intimidate him or to harass him. Uh, well, let's not look at it from there. There was an investigation around Labour House, particularly about a particular shop that was being occupied on the fourth floor of labor house that the police have said okay the person that owns that shop is like a terrorism financing person that his activities was also found out in sudan to be very very uh, a, a very a threat to that particular country at that time now he's in nigeria his activity was also found to be a very threat to nigeria that's what the police is saying but on the side of the labor many of us understand that the labor accommodate people who have solidarity with labor who will join labor to be able to advocate for the betterment of workers. That is on one hand. But for the invitation of the NLC president, we should see it as opportunity for the NLC to also speak from his own angle or what they know about the protest, what they know about the individual the police is inviting, and what they know about the individual the police have already kept in their cell, who are who police are accused or alleged that they made mention of the NLC president to be doing one or two things for them. A co conspirator. Uh, the, it may not be, but it's just that the word used to to make it look a little big could be a co-conspirator. But we know that NLC cannot be a co-conspirator to illegal activities that will be to the detriment of Nigeria. We can see the relationship that NLC and the presidency have been established over the month, particularly with the signing of the new minimum wage and other robust engagement with the government. So NLC that I know from 1970 that it was established cannot be a co-conspirator terrorizing its own country or terrorizing the Nigerian state. That's the one. But we must also understand that this particular invitation is for the NLC to clear all the allegations that may have come. Because you must also remember that NLC, from instance, denied participation in this protest that took place. And NLC, from instance, also denied having a hand in the protest. And NLC, at that initial stage, also said the government should not harass or intimidate protesters. Those are the stance of NLC from the beginning. And I think that stance still remains what a jail led NLC is still pushing for. So whatever it may be going to the police to go and answer may be something that they just want to find more information, particularly on the said 
individual who occupy the fourth floor of labor house, who will operate a bookshop according to the police operate a bookshop so those could be one of the things that they need to find out and we must also say that it wasn't during the time of our uh, uh, jail that this person occupied the bookshop that bookshop had been there for over five years i think it was when uh, uh, i was there that was bookshop started so it's something that nsv president joe will just go do the normal thing you need to do make a statement and i know as he's going he's going with uh, his lawyers and one of them will be Ferry Falan, who is the lawyer to Nigerian Labour Congress and the board member of Nigerian Labour Congress. So I don't see any intimidation around NSC president, but just for him to answer some questions. But it is better if you go and you know, clear the air so that all these things can be buried once and for all. Now, in, in other sections of the media, mm -hmm. particularly the way this day newspaper published it, we'll mm -hmm. take a look at this day again and then we'll look at the strap line. It is from the debates on an invitation which has been handed out to individuals which are uh, prior to now have also been disregarded without any severity. Mm. But a look at this day newspaper beneath the masthead where you have that story. Police invite NLC president for questioning over terrorism, financing, treason, others. The strap line reads, one, failure to honor letter would lead to activation of warrant of arrest. Now, mm. I, I saw a response to this. Mm. And many persons were asking the Nigerian police, where was all this? failure to invite uh, to honor the letter would be uh, an activation of warrant arrest in the case of the former Kogi state governor. It, it almost feels as though some individuals are above the law. In, on, on the issue of the, the former governor of Kogi state, you know what really happened. It was EFC that invited him. And when he jumped arrest, you can see the, the commando uh, uh, means whereby EFC want to get him arrested. That is one. That is the, if you fail to to show up, that is the way they will. Add. I definitely want to come after you. But on the part of the uh, NLC, I, I don't. I, I I didn't have the opportunity to read the, the letter from the police. But the choice of word, we have to be very careful. Whether the police use that word, especially using the word the treason or other charges, we don't know because we don't have a copy of the letter. But we just have to be very careful because I know that so in, this caution is now to media houses in definitely the, in because, publishing the headlines. In, because because what I discover about our media houses, particularly print media, is that they love sensational headlines. They love pushing it out to attract readers and to attract people to be able to buy into the news. But at the end of the day, by the time you go through the letter, you discover it was a, could be a very simple letter written to any other person. Like for instance, one of the media houses was saying that it was stripped off of his title. Was to, I said that is how it is in the face of the law. If you like be a professor, even if a former president is invited by any security agents today, they will address him by his name. They will forget the titles. You get it? That's how it is done. But the key issue is that the NSC president definitely, I know he will honor it. He's a man of peace, a man of law, and he will honor it. And they have nothing to fear. NSC have nothing to fear because they know that right from the beginning, right from 1970, the NSC have been, even in the face of military juntas, they have never been found to be it, it committed any treasonable offense or found to be financing terrorism it has never been so it is not at this point in time the nls will be accused of such and i want to believe that we should just restrain ourselves from using some sensitive word that could just make it look as if the nlc has been guilty of the, because to me it's like nlc is guilty already because the way some media houses are pushing the whole story they should just follow it the way it is because if you ask the police now the police will tell you they never accuse him of that rather they are asking to come and answer question which i know nlc is good enough to give the police a response that is befitting for their hearing well these are the perspectives by mr olami lekon this morning following the invitation as handed out to the nlc president comrade joe Ajero, following the involvements of the Nigerian Labour Congress in uh, the invasion of its headquarters in the nation's capital by men of the Nigerian police force. Now, there are strong allegations to believe that uh, there is some financing of terrorism and treasonable felonies that could be attached to the position of the NLC in its involvement uh, in some of the aforementioned allegations. Now, in the coming days, we'll get better perspective into this. But let's also turn our attention away from this to another pressing issue of the economy. Nigeria's economy over criticized for its over reliance on its oil. This morning has some statements in terms of refutals as issued by the NNPCL over alleged subsidy payments ongoing. The NNPCL is uh, quite strong in its position that in the last nine years there's been no such payments. Now, this story was earlier captured on the Matrix and the Nigerian Tribune. Uh, whilst this is the lead focus, you'd find that, that the NMPCL is also boasting of uh, 
net profits to the mm -hmm. tune of 3.3 trillion naira mm -hmm. with hopes mm -hmm. that our crude oil will begin sales in naira for Dangote refinery and others. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's get your perspective in these mm -hmm. developments. Mm -hmm. First, from the said confusion mm -hmm. over debt claims by the NNPCL as published by the Matrix. Mm -hmm. Now, whilst the CFO of NNPCL is confirming that the federal government indeed owes 7.8 trillion naira subsidy debts from January to July. Mm -hmm. How does a layman understand this? It's very confusing, and uh, we also need to very caution when we use the word subsidy. Because uh, uh, let me first start by saying that we commend the NMPC led management. You know, when Mile Kari came into the opposition, one of the good things that he did that economists like us really appreciate was that he began to publish the audit report of NMPC, begin to tell us what NMPC have been earning, what they have been on their recovering of, and what they have been losing, or what all their joint ventures. He brought that into play and became. A, a, a stewardship report and a achievement on his part. Initially, no GMD published an NMPC report. No GMD do auditing of NMPC. But when he came in, that was what he brought in. And he has continued that line for the past six, seven years has been that airship of that particular organization. But however, based on the, the, the report, the headline, the choice of framing of some of these news headlines, that's where the confusion lies. You know, when you read the report of the NMPC, which I also had the opportunity to go through yesterday, they stated how normally a business will read out what they are earning, what they are losing, what they thought is their debt, and what they thought is their capital. Get it? That's how they staple it. So for 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 every Nigerian to be able to understand some of this, I don't want to go into the using terminology that could be a little bit too confusing, just like the way some headlines are put it. But the issue remains that for NMPC, as far as the federal government is concerned, they are not giving anybody shishi when it comes to subsidy payment. But because that word, in terms of their under recovery, when NMPC mentioned, they didn't even use the word subsidy. They used under recovery. The under recovery has been the statement that we been using for years. Even when they were even paying subsidy to oil marketers and the rest of them who are importing, that's the word they use. But because of our own understanding, to be able to simplify it and make people to understand what under recovery means, we twist it and make it to be subsidy payment. You get it? That's what it means literally. What under recovery for NMPC is that when we are doing this business, this is what we have on that we, we have suffered in terms of debt and what we have suffered in, in terms of uh, gains and this is what has happened over the years why is it that nobody is talking about the forest challenger nmpc main mention in that report and one of the biggest problems they had was the forest exchange volatility and that's what led to the huge debt that main mentioning so why do we leave the substance of the issues and begin to chase after things that will make the entire society to be, oh, they are still paying for subsidy. Meanwhile, the biggest problem we are having in the oil and gas sector, particularly with NMPC, is that the exchange rate is the fluctuating aspect of exchange rate. The uncertainty around it is making them to lose money and pay for more. And here comes the issue. Since they floated the naira to the dollar issue, it raised up the, the, the gap and the balance within it. And why do they do that? CBN is looking for more naira to be able to keep more dollar in the Nigerian uh, foreign reserve. And that's what has led to it. I don't I wish I have, we have enough time to discuss this. We would have been able to let's break it let's down. dwell on it more largely, especially mm. for the fact that it's coming at a time when they're resurfacing mm. fe uh, queues in feeling stations mm. across the country. And there are also positions of Ipman, which we'll look at, look at later. Mm -hmm. But in boasting about a profit of mm. 3.3 trillion naira, mm. many are asking shouldn't that money have been sufficient enough to change the dynamics in what the downstream market is experiencing this is what happened when you make when you are running when you are doing audit of your business the most declaration they have made not that the money is the 3.3 million is with them it has been expended on several things including worker salary pension everything they have gone through in 2023 they have expended that money they are only just telling us on paper this is what we have been able to achieve and this is what we're able to have might, one of the things they made mention, the dividend they're supposed to pay to federal government, what do they use the money to do? They use part of that money to do their under recovery, which we normally call in, literally in, in local balance subsidy payment. You get it? But what they did is that the payment was done for themselves, not for anybody. And that's why we have challenge. That's why the, the others, is, other experts are querying, how come do you have this huge debt on you? So who is now collecting? If you are paying subsidy and nobody is claiming to have collected subsidy from you, then who is collecting that subsidy? Now, on the aspect of now bringing this money to be able to help the downstream sector to function very well, and I can tell you for free that that money is not available because we expend, NMPC expend that money 
in the importation of VMS. Now, now, a lot of Nigerians are also quite not too happy mm. with the coordination of affairs of the NNPCL in mm. recent times. Mm. Do you agree with the fact that uh, under Mele Kari, these concerns are genuine? Mm. It's very genuine, and it's not under Mele Kari. It has been for many, many years. Even when we have pious individuals who occupy the office of GMD of NNPC, we always have this challenge. What is the challenge? NNPC is mainly sacred card in the Nigerian economy. It is mainly sacred card in the Nigerian state. That is where the ruling elite and the Nigerian state milk the economy and ensure that it is like that. The question we should be asking ourselves, why is it that for over 25 years of since 1999, the refineries are not working? That's the biggest question that many Nigerians are asking. It's not even the person occupying the office. That's why you see that in recent times, the man will say, we have some things to tell ourselves. We have some things to tell Nigerians. Tell us what is the problem. Why is the refinery not working? Why are we spending over 19 billion US dollars on the same refineries and it's not working? Four of them all together. So what is the challenge of the refinery? It boils down to just, not just to the challenge that Nigerian state is having, but a conspiration between the IOC and some elite in our society, particularly those who operate in the oil and gas sector and the rest of them. So that's where the issue is. It's not about removing the military. If you remove military today, the next person that comes, it will still follow the detection of the people who control the oil and gas sector in Nigeria. And that's why we need to understand. Although we need a very steadfast individual who can stand against all odds and be able to give us what we want. And what do we want with Nigeria? Let the refinery work. The four refineries, let them work. Not by privatization. There was a time under this military, the, private, uh, the, the, the refi refineries were almost going for, for PPP arrangement. If not for Nigerian Labour Congress and Penga and Penga that came out and said, no, that's not what we want. And the president will be listening to them and they subside that particular policy and the four refineries never go for PPR, uh, PP, uh, me, what they call, PPA, uh, PPP arrangement. And that's why I didn't see that. Initially, people who wanted to take that particular refinery and say, okay, let's all be forbid for the federal government of Nigeria and let it work. They will collect our money later. The government said no. Because labor cried out and said no. This will subject the economy to more international conspiracy. So that's how it stopped. But, but even with that intervention, mm. we still have an issues with turnaround maintenance mm -hmm. not yielding mm -hmm. its desired outcome. Mm. Of all the foreign refineries in the country, none can be said to be functional. Exactly. And the reason are best known to them who occupy the office. Although some of us have been able to dissect some of the reasons. The reason is because to the oil and gas sector in South Africa, particularly Nigeria, specifically, it has been established that for the oil and gas sector to work effectively for Nigerians to benefit, we must refine locally. NFPC must have the strength and the capability to do exploration. But ask me, NFPC is not doing exploration. The declaration they made over that 3.3 naira uh, they have made in 2023, how did they make that money? They made that money through joint ventures. They never sent any of their engineers to the field to go and explore anything. All the equipment, all the machines, all the technical know-how was done by IOCs. So, how do you expect the Nigerian people to benefit from the oil and gas sector if this is the arrangement that we have from 1970s? Not just today, 1970s. We have always had this arrangement that it is the IOC that will be doing the exploration through joint venture with NNPC. They will just go, take the crude, sell it, and give us our part. And sometimes we don't even get up to 50% of what they need to give us. Because they will come back with the excuses of uncertainty in the oil and gas sector, uh, international market, uncertainty in terms of uh, oil theft, uncertainty in terms of uh, all manner of uh, issues around the Nigeria data, and they will use that excuse and even reduce what's supposed to be royalties to the Nigerian government. Because all the NFPC declare at 3.3 come from royalties, what they get from the joint ventures and other investment across the world. There was a time they also do their investment. They die investment, they do their investment. That means they put part of their money into some areas, particularly in the oil and in the gas sector. They have about three companies in the gas sector, Nigerian uh, gas marketing company. They also have Nigerian energy. And these are the areas that NMPC put this money. And by the time the money comes from all those areas, although the declaration is not part of what they declare, because energy normally declare their own profit every year differently from NMPC declaration. But what we need to know is that as far as the NMPC is not participating concretely and equally the way IOC participates in the exploration, in the marketing, in the sales and the refining, there's no way we can have the benefit of oil and gas in Nigeria. Now, now the just concluded mm. oil and gas week, which was held in Abuja, we also looked at uh, the issue of shifting the goalposts mm. in terms of the promise to get our refineries working again. Mm. Now, this morning on the accompanying newspaper, the Nigerian Tribune, we saw projections that by October, mm. 
which is less than two months away exactly that uh our fate is looking to get even better as the nnpcl pledges to begin to sell crude in naira mm. what does this do for the functionality of our refineries definitely it's, it's, it's a good way to go but we even expect it to even start in september that's the thinking when i saw the news yesterday i was like no 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 this would have been in september but we could also understand the frustration of the federal government so like the nnpc because it is the report of what the NNPC is doing, that's what they give to the federal government. And based on what has been happening so far, because of the joint venture arrangement with IOC, all the crude that NNPC is getting through the exploration of this IOC, based on report, it has already been sold off front. So for us to get a new channel, a new narrative around this particular one, that's why October is fixed. And I also want to commend the federal government for taking this initiative because these are the things that we suggested. Even for the refinery to also come up on stream, this same committee that federal government set up with federal minister of finance and NMPC and other agencies, this is what we also want to reflect for the refinery to work. Because if federal government have not set up this uh, uh, committee to look into the crude oil sales in Naira and just leave it for NMPC or NMPC sell it, it will not happen. But when they now see that there is a new force around this arrangement, and that's why NMPC have to succumb, and the IOC themselves just have to arrange themselves. And look at local priorities and look at local domestic supply and they have to come up with this arrangement that they're going to be supplying local refinery of we could oil in naira but we are also pushing on um, this platform that the same committee that government set up to have this realized we also want the same thing to happen for the refinery because if we have an independent committee led by presidency then the refinery will work because now it will now be the sole responsibility on the president to ensure that the committee work and the committee will work with instruction from the president on ordering an to ensure that all the refinery work, all the contractors handling the refurbishment, the revival of the refinery, they will be on their toes. They will also have updates on what has been happening. How much has been given to them for the revival of those refinery? How much is left? What work has been done? What is need to be done? And what that the other challenge they are facing? We will have all those updates by the, by the committee. And that's what really happened in this committee that was set up. Because the moment that committee sat about two weeks ago, they look at the challenges of what has been happening in oil and gas sector. Why is it that any place cannot sell in, 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 in Naira? They also, the CBM was also part of it. Although to look at the exchange rate volatility that normally comes in, because it is the exchange rate volatility of the Nigerian government making more money is why initially they don't want to sell in Naira. Because they believe that the more they sell in dollar, the more it comes to the Nigerian economy and the more it buffered our foreign reserve. But now they have understood that even with that, there could be an arrangement that could stop to that particular arrangement and make the local economy to be more you know, friendly for that investment to come in. And that's why they have set up the committee. But for the refinery, we also need a committee to look at that and make it more functional for us. Now, looking at the political perspective of mm. this developing story, we saw comments coming in from the former VP, mm. Alhaji Abubakar Tiku, mm. and he says that uh, this is another chapter of what he calls an opaque governance mm -hmm. in light with the handling of the NNPCL and Nigeria's fortunes under President Bola Metinibu. What do you make of uh, Alhaji Atiku's speech? You could be right, or he's even right. But that would take us back to our NNPC under Obasanjo and him as vice president. Was it not also opaque? We need to also interrogate because the the, the, the preceding the, the preceding action and activities of NNPC didn't start today. It has always been there, including under the military era. It also happened, but we could see a glimpse of this opaque governance, opaque arrangement in NNPC right from the era. You get it? it Wasn't under that those him being the vice president and the chairman of the privatization committee that sold the, the refineries. It was him. It was the was the one in charge of privatization and commercialization in Nigeria then. So how come is now pinpointing that we have an opaque arrangement in NPC? Because it is there because it was also there when you were also in government. So people should know how to pinpoint of uh, uh, point accusing figure on a particular government because as long as they are also part of the government some years back, it is not arrangement that the government is following. Up to today, okay, let us ask ourselves the question. During their time, was NPC publishing or editing their account? It was not done. So those are the things that could give us a glimpse of what has changed and what is not have not changed. We can say that NMPs have not really changed entirely. But there's a new glimpse of life in terms of telling us what they have earned, what they have lost, and what they are expecting. And that's what the change that Emile Kare brought to bear. But we still know that he has his own challenges. And that challenges boils down to the foundation of NMPC right from 1970 that it was founded and established. 
Now, now, we'll revisit this day newspaper as well to look at the headline story and, and get more perspective into what the story is about in terms of the boosted revenues of the NNPCL according to the 2023 Financial Audited Report. Now, on this day newspaper, we'd find that story as lead story. Now, we're looking at the strap lines to get more perspective. Mm. The, the first strap line there reads... Discloses 67,000 barrels per day pledged for $1 billion loan on Patakot Refinery. Discloses 67,000 barrels per day pledged for $1 billion loan on Patakot Refinery. No subsidies paid to any marketer in nine years, says NNPCL CFO. Says FEM handling shortfalls not paying subsidy on the payments on petrol projected to hit 6.8 trillion naira by december now, now two, two two things mm -hmm. we'll look at as we look to move forward exactly first is the projection mm -hmm. in terms of the loan on the patakot mm -hmm. refinery mm -hmm. one billion dollar loan exactly sixty-seven thousand barrels by per day indeed. does it make up for the loan is this projection Rem remember beyond the mechanically completed stage of the definitely, patak refinery definitely, definitely. Th there's no timeline on when it will actually begin mm -hmm, operation. operation and recently we, whether i've not seen a report from any npc whether they are the one that shifted the goal that the refinery will not work this year anymore but a lot of media houses and a lot of online have projected that okay the refinery will not work so i'm still waiting for a statement from any npc whether they are the one that will push out that news or a, a fifth a fifth column is just push out that news. Now, in terms of the loans they collected, we all know what happened to that money. They collected money to refurbish that, that particular uh, uh, refineries. And we know that they don't have the cash. The one thing we must know about them is they, they don't have the cash. They don't have the money at hand. What they use in trading is the crude. They use the crude to trade. They either sell it or they give you in advance or they borrow money from you and they use the crude to pay you. That's what the NMPC does, and that's what they have been doing over the years. And it's not just starting today. It has been there. It's just that democracy exposed some of the shenanigans in an economic arrangement to many of us to understand. And democracy also gives us the opportunity to understand some of the economic policy of government. In the past, nobody would understand the economic policy of the military. When the military were, were, were available as heading the affairs of this country, nobody understand the economic principles or policy of the military, except for the SAP arrangement that we also know too the uh, uh, intervention of academics, Nigerian Labour Congress, TUC and the rest of them, who fought a long that uh, SAP was a bad arrangement. But in democracy, we have already understood the economic principles of art. We now know that Nigeria is a market economy, although it's not a free economy per se. Because when you talk about free economy, it's more and more, more uh, developed. You know the way developed country does that. But it's a market economy where price determines the majority of the things. So, in terms of any PSC operation, right from time memorial, they have always used crude to bargain for their all their financial activity so when they now wanted to revive or refurbish the refinery it is too crude they get the money they wanted and you can remember that the three billion us dollar that federal government also got from them was too crude to the african export bank they got from last year actually they got it through that way so that has been the arrangement of nmps and this will point to us how nmps has been operating with the joint ventures so what they do is that to collect money in advance from all those iocs on a particular crude, okay, you're going to be doing exploration about 100,000 barrel, 50,000 barrel. You, uh, this one, this one, they may have a, I don't know how many they have, but they will just collect money from each of them based on the total number of our strength in terms of exploration, which could be 2 million barrel per day. Maybe they distribute that 2 million barrel per day among all the IOCs and they collect the money in advance. That's what they have been doing. That's how they have been operating. So, in this regard to the refinery, they have already done that by mortgaging the refinery refurbishment through borrowing and using crude as mortgage. Now, the other aspect of the issue that we wanted to ask about the, the trillion, this six trillion about uh, the debt that is on them, which many people have called subsidy. This is the challenge that we have. The exchange volatility of our foreign uh, dollar is one of the ones that is keeping this high rate of money that government debt for NMPC and the rest of us. Because if you remember, if you cast your mind back, one of the challenges that the hype man and all the market normally call for that, we need forex to import. We need forex to import. And then NPC will do what? We'll bring out money for them and they'll collect the dollar before you know it. They'll bring the product in. Before you know it, they'll come back again and they'll ask the exchange rate is killing the business. You know why? Because we are fixing our exchange rate. And that's why a report came out last year with a with one of the research groups I worked with talking about 11 different exchange rates that we have in Nigeria. 11 different exchange rates. 
one of the exchange rates that was so volatile in the Nigerian economy was the exchange rate being done at the seaport and the airport. If you understand what I'm trying to bring up, at the seaport, all these government agencies have their own exchange rate. Not until this year that CBN said no, put a stop to that. And up to now, some of them are still practicing it. That some of the charges, some of the money people pay at the port, there has been fixed at the exchange rate that we normally call custom rate. You ask me, why would CBN fix custom rate higher than the main uh, official rate? Then sometimes they bring you. Now it's also coming at a time when Nigerians are wondering. Mm -hmm. What the single export window is supposed to achieve? <laughs> Remember the president, mm -hmm. Bola Metinibu, under the reforms for the CBN, mm -hmm. had also talked about unifying the exchange rate. Exactly. So now, having a single exchange window with the ever fluctuating mm -hmm. custom exchange rate, like mm -hmm. you've said, many Nigerians who are probably not even in the business of importing and exporting mm -hmm. or even operating along the import mm -hmm. exporter window exactly. are still finding a difficulty understanding the policy of the government mm -hmm. and what it intends to achieve. Because the, the new policy is taking us out of the old one. The old one have multiple range, as I later pointed In the seaport, for instance, all, all the agencies who collect taxes have different range fixed they collect. But not until this one came and said, okay, we are putting it into a unilateral one. We are only having one single rate. But even that single rate has not been achieved because the customer rate is still different from the official rate that we get from the banks and the rest of them. So those ones are the volatile aspect that is affecting the oil and gas. So when NFP said, we have incurred 6 million Naira. By the time they put it in foreign exchange, they will tell you that because of the exchange rate volatility, because the import they are doing, they do it with export uh, with, uh, uh, with with dollar. So by the time you want to exchange naira to dollar to be able to keep up with the floating or keep up with the importation, then it will go up. For instance, as we speak with this money, it's one thousand six hundred naira. By the time you want to import PMS now, they, and they are looking for dollar to pay for that PMS, they will be looking for one thousand six hundred naira for every one one dollar they need. So how do you talk to that? Basically tomorrow now, the same dollar now comes down to 1,500 naira. Then after two days, it now goes up to 1,700 naira. That is how the debt will keep piling as a result of what? The exchange rate volatility. And this is where the CBN need to come in. And this is where the federal government have to come in and rescue all from this evil, this threat in terms of exchange rate volatility on the economy. Because how what will happen is that from the CBN angle, they are selling treasury paper. They are selling bond paper. They are doing money market. What are they looking for? They are looking for more Naira to be able to show up and bring more dollar in exchange. So what would they do? They keep up fluctuating the price. From 1,005, last week it was 1,566 Naira to a dollar at the NAFEX market. And you know we also have two markets now. Apart from the IRA we do the NAFEX market and the NAFEM market. The NAFEX market in Nigerian autonomous foreign exchange market. Then the NAFEM is also another exchange market on its own. Now you ask me, all these markets in as much as the government want to unify them, we are still having a difference of 2 Naira, 3 Naira, 4 Naira. So where does that 2 Naira, 3 Naira, who do they pass it on to? They pass it on to Nigerian citizens. And that's what happened. So we will be able to simplify some of this so that Nigerians can understand that in as much as NNPC is complaining that uh, we are paying subsidy, we should know where the problem is coming from. It's the exchange rate issue. Because as long as the CBN is trying as much as so to buffer our foreign reserve, this volatility will continue. So that's why the, the idea of selling crude in Naira to the refineries comes in. But I will still pinpoint that it is not yet an escape route yet. Because at that Naira rate, they will still be doing 1516, except we will bring it down. That is the only answer. And when we bring it down, there's also a probability there will be a challenge. Because the problem of a, every country is that. In as much as the federal government is trying to make more money, they're also trying to protect the economy. This is what happened. They are afraid of sabotaging elements in the country. Particularly if we reduce our exchange rate and everything comes down. What will happen to smuggling? Particularly the oil and gas. That's why the federal government is. That's why economists like us say, okay, let us do a balance of economic policy in the area of uh, let us look at what is more suitable to help the home economy to grow and safeguard our borders, safeguard our economy and promote more of exports than import. But as we speak right now, the government is promoting more of imports than, than exports. Export. That's where the challenge is. Now, a very robust dynamics and quite critically pointed out by uh, Mr. Adefo Larry Olami Lekon is the need to improve on our exports. Other than largely relying on importation with the drive to unify the exchange rate at both the importer-exporter window and even across our border points, 
to help better this course. Now, in keeping with more publications this morning, let's revisit the front page of the Punch newspaper. Now, on the Punch newspaper earlier this morning, interesting stories of concern above the masthead, you'd find Tinibu Panel, Dangote Refinery, agree on September petrol turnout. Tinibu Panel, Dangote Refinery, agree on September petrol rollout. IG unveils 169-man squad against kidnapping others. Opposition tackles presidency over new presidential jet. We'll come to the presidential jet more later, but the lead story is on the situation as tankers besiege depots as petrol shortage worsens. Independent outlets sell 950 naira per litre as black market hits 1,400 naira per litre. Many fuel trucks yet to load. NNPC not supplying enough petrol yet, says Ipman. Mm -hmm. Now, whilst there is hope from mm -hmm. what the header story tells us mm -hmm. with a projection for September rollout exactly. in the interim, mm -hmm. a high cost of transportation is on the loom. Definitely. With definitely. this 950 naira per litre at mm -hmm. independent outlets and 100 and, uh, 1,400 naira at uh, black market exactly. rates. Exactly. Exactly. Ipman is now blaming NNPC as not supplying enough. Yeah, because NNPC is not, <laughs> he's not giving them fuel. That's what it means because initially they were the one importing by themselves, but now NMPC is now his major so importer of the PMS. Although at the end of the day, they also outlet it to a, dep a depot owners and the rest of them to help them to sell it. But what the question still boils down to okay, this September falling out of uh, PMS from Dangote, we want it to be real, we want it to happen. It was in July before it was shifted to August. From August 9th, has now been shifted to September. So we want it to be real. What it will mean and translate is that we are going to have enough supply of it across the country and we also want to use the opportunity to encourage Ipman to please take Dangote products because there was an argument last week and the week before that it is more cheaper to import than to buy from local refineries that was the argument of Ipman and Ipman on their own we also need to encourage them they should speak with one voice they are always diverse opinion from Ipman chapter in one state, from Ipman chapman in one city, saying one thing, the other one saying another. They must come with one voice and let us know their stand. Because I knew from Ipman headquarters, they always be talking about how to encourage local refineries. But the voices, the cocophony voices we are hearing from their chapters across the country, is not encouraging. So they must speak with one voice, take product from Dangote. The way you also took is Duzu also take his PMS and that will go a long way and the fear of this high cost of transportation can be this and again we must also be able to help ourselves to understand that the reason why this cures and uh, this challenge around the depot was that I think from the arrangement that NMP and Dangote is having there will be a lesser importation of this particular product going forward so they may not order for a new product and the one that is available we also know that this gimmick of uh, cream and artificial scarcity is also there to be able to raise up the price imagine depot owner now selling for 950 why from 720 they sold around june july so why is 950 when the product himself the price have not changed in the international market the the, the normal argument they normally pinpoint that our international could as price has changed it has it is even falling as a result of geopolitical tension in middle east so we must be able to help the local economy to strive because all these issues that we are creating around the economy particularly using the oil and gas sector to impact nigeria negatively it will be more on us they have to understand it will be more on us one way or the other because they are also also part, uh, part, partaking in the other market that is beyond oil and gas they're also buying food they're also buying other things so when you now eat the price of your product so high to 950 at this point in time what do you think will happen to ordinary tomato seller pepper seller and the other product that has been produced or the other spices that will buy rice and the rest of them that will eat. They also add their price because everybody is looking at the dictate of the cost of transportation to determine the price of all their other goods. So we must encourage every Nigerian businessman and traders that it is not allowed about profit. Just any moment from now, federal government will begin our one, 1 billion to manufacturers. And we have said it on another platform that in as much as government is giving this money to all these businesses, how many of them think of how to have a reciprocal way of giving back to nigerian society because what the government is doing that they are giving you money to this business are pay as zero interest the one billion is going to be at zero interest so how are you going to ensure that the price of your goods is very low affordable for nigerian society? So, so it's more of an issue of patriotism on the part of nigerian businessmen definitely the depot owners why do they i i i the price to 950 from 720 to 950 
So why won't the price go for 1,000 to 1,003? I you know one of the things why I quickly argue that why I, I said on the sister station or other uh, uh, platform was that why I believe that subsidy may not be there was that there are about five issues that normally arise when it comes to subsidy and that's why some people are not looking at one of the issues that will always arise is the exchange volatility that Ipman and the rest of them will claim that they need to government need to give them more dollar. Another issue have to do with uh, the issue of uh, 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 importation that they need more document to do the importation. Then that issue have to do with uh, the areas whereby people not always ask government that okay, there's this differentiation of price of transporting this product from the south to the north. Nobody is asking government for that amount of money again. You get it? Then there's also the issue whereby people will begin to accuse NMPC, particularly the Ipman and the rest of the marketers, that okay, we are not going to import, we don't have dollar to import. It is no more there. And that's why I said that everybody kept quiet when it comes to issues they normally used to argue about subsidy. But as Ayla pointed out, what NMPC is doing from their audited account is that they are doing under recovery. And it is not today that I've been using that particular words to express what they are doing. But in literary, the way other people want to interpret that word is to say they are paying for subsidy. So that is what has been happening so far. Well, it is a trying time in Nigeria in terms of being able to cater for our transportation needs from the angle of being able to buy PMS at an affordable rate. Now, whilst Dangote Refinery has been the first glimpse of hope in affording Nigerians a cheaper alternative, is in terms of the timeline on its delivery, which has also been hinged by a commitment from NMPCL to sell crude to Dangote in Naira. Now, whilst this is the case, the Independent Petrol Marketers Association of Nigeria, Ipman, has also faulted NMPCL as to not supplying enough. Now, at independent outlets in Nigeria this morning, the report by the Punch newspaper is that the pump price of PMS sells at 950 naira per liter, whilst at the black market, it ranges between 1,200 naira and 1,400 naira per liter. Now, it's uh, interesting times in Nigeria this moment, and uh, Mr. Alami Lekon has hinged it on the need to have patriotism at heart as we look to cater to the need of Nigerians. Now, and in leaving this conversation, another conversation that has uh, elicited some reactions from Nigeria is on conversation based on the new presidential jet as President Bola Metinibu leaves for France. Now, and two papers earlier reported this, the mm -hmm. Daily Independent and the Guardian looked at it, mm -hmm. and it's off the back of last week reports that mm -hmm. uh, Nigeria's fleet was seized mm -hmm. owing to some debt owed and whatnot. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And now the new jet... The Daily Independent is reporting it to be 15 years old and Nigeria mm -hmm. is the third owner mm -hmm. in, in that line. It's the challenges on information dissemination. Many are looking at it from the angle of how can we be a nation that largely is caught in these controversies of where we stand in mm -hmm. terms of issues of the presidency, which mm -hmm. is supposed to be you know, more of a very decorated office in terms of his security mm -hmm. for foreign travels and whatnot. Hmm. I, I think for me, I may not want to take the the headline of uh, the Daily the Independent who like and sing that because I remember when the issue of New Pervergent came in, the presidency specified and informed Nigerians, although those of us that had the opportunity to read through the newspaper and watch some of their speeches on their issue, how they specify what they want. However, wherever the Daily Independent got their own information that it's a 15 years old airplane and it's a third Nigeria, is a third user, I don't know where they get it, but I believe that if the government will respond to this particular issue, they could respond to a uh, court suit because it's, it's quite really that a newspaper will go to that length and bring that information out. But on the part that if the government is very straightforward and can confirm and say that this particular news is fake and this particular news is wrong because from the initial stage, they specified and told us what they want and how much they are spending on that particular play. Get it so that is on one. Then for for the for, for the new plane or the world or those ones that were seized, we already know the news behind it why it was seized. And uh, it was also a, it's a call to Nigerians. A lot of Nigerians are are supporting the Nigerian nation. I'm telling you the fact. I could remember the PID case. I could also remember the the well the, there's one a power station in Nadamawa State. How some people were, were, took government to court asking for money to be paid to them that the government signed an agreement or one or two. So 
in speak volume of how we take our nation, particularly those who want to make money by all means. The case of the Ogun State was very glaring. A, a Chinese company that come with, with that doesn't have the requirement or the experience to do a particular project, and the government said no, we cannot give you the contract, and they cancel it. And the Chinese company is claiming that they have spent money on one or two things before the contract was was uh, it was cancelled. So they want their, their money back to refund to them. So you must look at that angle and see how government can be able to very more, more straightforward in terms of giving out contract to individuals and group, which is very, very important. Now, the Guardian newspaper actually looked at it also from the angle of a case of uh, mm. caution on contractual mm. impunity. Exactly. And that's what I was trying to explain, that contractual impunity goes back to the, the natives and Nigerians themselves, how they collide or collaborate with this element to come and defraud. If not for the state finance of the Buhari government, PID would have taken a lot of money out of Nigerians. But because the government was very steadfast, and we have an Anthony General who was very focused at that time, who take this case very serious. It has happened in the past. Not just at the federal government level, even at state government have lost a lot of money as a result of contractor trying to play double game. They know they are not fit for this particular contract. They know that they are not fit to carry out that particular project, but they will do all necessary, bribe their way. Ask me, how did that, go, uh, that contract from uh, that company from China bribe his way or get his way and collect that contract from Google State Government? It could have been through bribery, it could have been through kickback. But now the government that discovered that you cannot handle that particular project, they collected it from you. They now took them to, uh, to France. How many years ago? Why did you do it at the point when the, that particular governor was on seat? You now waited after the other one have left, you now came back and said, okay, this is what we want to do. For me, it's about patriotism. It's about our people who could like this element and want to defraud their state or the nation at large. Now, in keeping with all the stories greeting the conversation this morning, let's cross back over to the Vanguard newspaper. The Vanguard mirrors the aviation industry this morning uh, from the angle of his lead story. On the Vanguard this morning, you'd find the lead story, TSA, fresh panic as FG demands 50% of aviation agencies' revenue. Lots of damage being done to aviation, says Atsan. Nigeria's reputation may be battered, says experts. There's no need to investigate these agencies' earnings. Air transport's not in danger, says Keyamo. Now, now this is another concern for <laughs> business owners, exactly. especially in the aviation agency. Mm. The cost of flights, domestic flights, mm. has quite skyrocketed. Exactly. And with this call for 50% of the agency's revenue by mm. the federal government, many Nigerians have vision even higher prices for air tickets. No, no, no. This doesn't have to do with right air ticket. What they're asking for, the money you have been making. TSA have been with us for over 10 years. If you remember, TSA, uh, the, the single uh, treasury account. account. That's what it means. So, what develop money you have been earning, bring 50% of it to the federal government. Don't you, think, don't you think in recouping some of this monies they are going to be remitting, most agencies will be looking to make even more money? No, no. The issue is this. Making more money doesn't mean you are going to increase the rate that you are collecting. That's where people are missing it. The rate is there. If that's to be that, okay, they're increasing the rate they're collecting, would have been a big concern to business owner. But what the government is saying, the rate you have been collecting, either two years ago, three years ago, or the one you have been making. And again, it brings us to the fact that, is it that in the aviation sector, they have not been practicing TSA revenue uh, return back to the federal government? Or is it that the new minister is just waking up from his sleep and want them to return 50% of it? You know, it happened in the education sector. It happened across all sectors agencies of government and they are returning that money so for me it's about transparency and accountability of this particular project which we know that it will help the government to have more money for themselves because the diversification of the economy is not to go and begin to spend money on certain things but to have the one that you have been making where are they where is the money i think that's what the government is trying to do so that bring 50 percent of what you have made if you make 100 naira a day give me 50 naira keep 50 naira for you you should also remember that this part of this money that returning to government will still form part of their budget allocation at the end of the day so people should not be afraid about this TSA coming to fruition in the aviation sector. Rather, it is to show consideration for transparency and accountability. So that those agencies will not be the, the, the head of those agencies will not be sitting on too much money and they begin to misbehave. So 50% of their money should go back to the federation account. And it's for federal government. And we should know that this money will still form part of their budget allocation at the end of the day. Well, we must thank you for your objective review as we look mm. at some of the local newspapers this mm. morning. We appreciate you for lending us your time. Thanks for having me.